All right. Welcome. Um, thank you guys again for joining. And again, thank you for your patience today. Um, we ended up having to go back and add in a few more sessions. So again, thank you. Let's go ahead and get started. We are going to talk about creating lessons using Lesson Builder inside of Classflow. My name is Tori Powers. Um, I am part of the Classflow user engagement team, and I myself am actually a formal middle school math teacher. I used Classflow in the classroom um, just before I left. Oop, looks like somebody just joined. If you guys could please make sure that you guys are on mute. That would be awesome. All right. So let's get started. Let's talk about some lesson builder highlights. With Lesson Builder and with Classflow, what you guys are able to do is create a dynamic lesson. Um, you can customize the look of your lessons and make your lessons interactive and engaging for your students. There's also a way that you can add video and audio, um, checking for understanding by polling, and it, you really are allowing students to um, show their academic strengths. So what I want to do during today's session is we're going to kind of go back and forth between this WebEx screen and you'll also log into your own Classflow account and we'll be doing this at the same time. If you do have any questions throughout the session today, just pop them into the chat in the WebEx and I will try to get to those at the end of the session if we have some time. So at this point, if you guys could open up a browser, preferably Chrome, and go to your Classflow account. Making sure everybody's on mute. Perfect. Okay. So we are going to go through and um, talk about a few of these resources and then go through and actually create a new lesson. Looks like somebody just joined. Need to make sure that you guys are all on mute. I can hear a little bit of sound. Again, I'll try to get to all of your questions at the end of the session. Thank you guys again for joining. All right. So let's talk about a few of the features here. Within Classflow and Lesson Builder, you're going to see a few different types of cards. You're going to see a title card, and that's, no, that's uh, noted right here with this little tag. And this is kind of the card that's used at the face of your lesson. So when you're going through and looking at your lessons inside of my resources, that's the picture that's going to show up. You'll also have the option of adding in what are called section cards. Section cards are exactly what it is that they sound like. They separate sections of lessons from others. So if you wanted to do a warm up and then um, an actual direct teaching section, and then maybe a ticket out the door section. And again, we're gonna go through all of this and you guys are gonna have the chance to create your own lessons. So some of the options on the lesson builder. In the top right hand corner, I'm going to go through all of this, but it gives you the option of changing your card size. So you can adjust this to whatever feature you guys would um, find beneficial for your classroom. Uh, whether that's standard, widescreen, we even have ultra widescreen. And you can even adjust your card theme. You can easily add text, shapes, or even links and websites to your cards inside of your lesson. Okay, so you can add different resources inside of your lesson, and you can do that from a few different locations. My resources is very much, um, very much your, kind of like my PC on your computer. It's where you're gonna house all of your files and folders. You can also go to the Classflow resource pack. And again, I'm going to go through and show you guys how to get to all of these things. Right now, I'm just doing a quick overview before we get started of creating our own lessons. You can also search directly from Bing, which is so incredibly 
easy and wonderful. It made my life as a teacher so much easier. I didn't have to go outside and search on the internet itself. I could do it directly from inside of Classflow. We also have a toolbox. And within that toolbox, there are a lot of features in here that I know math teachers are absolutely going to love. There's a protractor, a ruler, a compass, set square. The graphing calculator is amazing. It's a Desmos calculator. I love it. We even have a revealer and a spotlight, so you can only show part of your screen at a time. And then we have a ton of widgets. The widgets are really cool, and I'm going to get to those a little bit later. Within each card itself, each slide, you have the option of either duplicating it, hiding it, deleting it, etc. And I know that right now a lot of this isn't going to make a ton of sense until you actually see it in action, and we're going to do that shortly. So we're going to go in, and you can either follow along with me on my screen or do this on your own Classflow account. But what I'm going to do is actually create a brand new lesson. So first of all, on my global navigation bar at the top, I've selected my resources. And this should be evident, but the big blue new button right here is where I'm going to go to create a new lesson. Once that new lesson has popped up, you'll notice that it does give me lesson properties. Lesson properties are important to put in. I do need to put in a title. So let's call this Camp Class Flow Lesson. I have the option of putting in a subject, grade level, country, and language. Standards. Currently, we do only offer for Common Core English and Math standards. Tags descriptions, and then if you have any lesson notes that you want to put in there. Give me just a second, guys. Hold on. Hello. Hi guys, we paused for just a second. Um, just make sure that you put yourselves on mute before we get uh, back to the lesson. Okay, and how do you do, uh, you, do you listen on your phone? I can mute you, give me just a second. You can listen on your phone or on your computer itself. Um, and, okay. Hold on for just a second. Hey guys, thank you again for holding. Um, I needed to make sure that everybody that had um, registered for this was able to join. Thank you guys again. I've also gone ahead and put you guys all on mute. I feel like a technical genius over here. I figured it out. So let's go back to sharing my screen. Okay. Um, Give me just a 
just a second, guys. It undid mute all. Okay, there we go. All right. You guys having fun yet? All right, let's go back. I'm inside of Lesson Builder. Inside of Lesson Builder, what I have done is I've given a title to my lesson. And then again, I've gone through and talked about all the different categories that I can input information into. Please make sure that you guys mute yourselves once you join. I'm getting a lot of um, sound in the background. Please make sure to mute yourself. Okay. Why, where do I mute myself? It's on the participant. I'm going to find you in just a second. There we go. Okay. Okay. I'm going to stop sharing. We're part of everybody's conversations today, guys. Mute all. Okay. All right, we are back and we are rocking and rolling. Why would you want to put in all of this information? If you wanted to go in and submit um, your lesson for a, to put inside the marketplace, you would want to put in the subject, the grade level, so that when people search for your lesson, they would easily be able to find it. That would be something beneficial that you could add in here. Now, once I've entered my title, I did need to hit save. And now I'm inside of Lesson Builder. So we talked about a few of the different features that are available, and I want to show you where all of those are because there are a ton of icons up here. On the top right-hand corner, underneath this little wheel, this cog, are options. And if I select that, there's a really helpful icon that I think you guys will really like when you're first getting started with Lesson Builder, and that's Show Icon and Text. When I select that, it's going to give you the um, name for each of the things that are on the toolbar, which is really helpful when you're first getting started. I'm going to go back to options. Remember how I talked about card theme and card resolution? Here's where you can automatically select them. I'm going to change my card resolution to just widescreen. And You'll also notice I have the option of going back to my lesson properties. I can print my lesson, which is very helpful. And if I wanted to apply a theme, I could. I think I'm going to leave it as is for right now. Here's that section card that I mentioned earlier. In order to add a new section card, in the bottom left-hand corner, under options, I can either add a card or add a section. Now, I want to show you one of my favorite features of a section card. Section cards, in my mind, are where I can change this to maybe say that this is going to be my warm-up. I can change the background on this card, and it's going to look really cool. I'm going to select Change Background. This will automatically take you into any background images that are already created and inside of your account. We'll just select that one. Now, you'll notice that it showed up on the section card, but I don't see anything else on my lesson. The really cool part about this is that when I select Preview, that you'll see it in the background over there. It gives me a background to my lesson. So the section cards are where you can change the background of your lesson, which is really neat. All right, so let's talk about how to add in a few things here. Up on the top is my toolbar. I'm going to add in some text, and then you're going to get all of these other options. You'll notice that there's even subscript and superscript, and even math formulas. So if you're a math teacher, you can type in all sorts of math um, equations, uh, and it will put it in, in the correct format. Let's change this to a 
warm up lesson or warm up for camp class flow. I'm going to move that and you'll notice that it will give me indicators as to where I'm at on the screen so that this is centered. If I highlight my text, that's how I can change where it's aligned. I can change the color of my text. Let's do purple. And maybe make this bold. There's also another option where you can change the fill for this text box. So if I wanted to change the fill to maybe yellow, and I can give this a border color if I wanted to, and even change the border width. Now, once I've made all of these selections, the cool part is, is that once I go to create a new text box, it should keep all of those same feet. Whoop should keep all the same features. It does with shapes. So when I go in here and let's put in, you'll notice that I do still have that purple text right there. So let's say um, we're gonna do a math review. Make that guy centered. Move him in the middle of my lesson. Oop, and it even tells me that it's smack dab in the middle of that entire card. This looks a little plain. I think that I wanna add in some background color. We have a fill tool. With the drop down, I can select the color that I might want to use. Let's do a blue. And I can change that. So quick and easy. I do want to go back and make sure I press the select option here. Let's add a new card. I want to point out that this new card does not have this little ribbon on it. If you remember, the ribbon indicates that it's the title card. So it's what's going to show up when you go to search through your resources, what card shows up when you're looking at that lesson. I think I'm going to add in some shapes this time. You do have a lot of different shapes that you can choose from. Let's do a star. Remember how I filled in my last uh, text box? You'll notice that that color stays. I can change this. Let's do red and maybe a green border. With shapes, you do have a couple of more options. Make that border a little bit more thick, and then I can change the style of it. You even have the option of changing um, how transparent it is which I really like. <clears throat> All right, so I've added in a star. Let's do a new shape. Let's say maybe I want to do square or rectangle. And you'll notice that once I added that in, it kept all of those same features that I had from my first one, which is awesome. I don't have to go back in and do it again. Now, just so that you guys know, I can click and drag this but it's not gonna hold the same proportion. If you want it to hold that same proportion, press and hold shift and then drag it. Then it's going to keep those proportions. Doesn't matter which way I'm pulling it. If you can see my mouse, you'll notice that it's moving in different directions, but my proportions are not changing. Now, I'm not gonna hold shift down so that you can see what happens. Without me holding shift down, it will change the shape of it. So that's just a quick little tip that you guys might find helpful and beneficial. Okay. Let's add another card. This time, I think I want to go into the toolbox. Remember that I mentioned that there were a whole bunch of different features within the toolbox. Now, again, I'm a little biased here. I'm a former math teacher. I love the graphing calculator. So when I select Graph Calculator, this is going to open up the Desmos Calculator. And it's going to look a little different when I'm looking at it from this perspective, because I'm essentially building my lesson. When I go into Preview and Deliver, it will look the way that it's supposed to. But I can go in here and type in an equation. Let's do y equals 3x plus 4. Notice that it graph that line for me. So I can zoom in, zoom out. So that's a really cool tool. 
I cannot add anything else onto this card if I have the graphing calculator on that card. Let's add a new card. Let's add something else from the toolbox. Let's do a compass. So the compass, you can adjust the size. I can rotate it. And if I select the pencil, oops, let's go into preview. If I select that pencil, let's do a good color, let's do blue. There we go. I can draw a circle with my compass. And it will give you the measurement in centimeters. Let me exit out of that. All right, somebody asked, I saw, what's the assessment? The assessment allows you to build questions inside of that one card. And this is something that is pretty high level, so I'm hesitant to open it up and show you. But just as a preview, if you're selected on top of that card, select Add Questions. And it will open up Assessment Builder, allowing you to add questions onto that one card. I like to use that for either warm-ups or ticket out the doors. Now, if I add these tools on here, um, the students would be able to use these if you sent these out on a card. You can also set the uh, graphing calculator to a student card as well. So somebody mentioned student card. Let's talk about that for just a second. What we're looking at here is what's going to display on my screen up on the board. There's an icon down here at the bottom that says teacher slash student. And when I select that, it opens up two carousels here. I've got my teacher cards up at the front of the room, and then I have student cards. Student cards are something that will automatically send out to the students if you have them connected to your class. So somebody asked if you could add in a graphing calculator to a student card. Yes, you can. So let's look at this one right here. Once I press that little plus sign, it's going to create that student card. And you'll notice I do have the option of accessing everything that is on the toolbar. So I can add in a graphing calculator so that students can use it. Now, for those math teachers out there, if you're wanting them to play with a specific equation, you want them to see y equals 3x plus 2, Oops. plus 2. Make sure you hit this little Save button in the bottom left-hand corner. That saves that equation in there so that when you send that card out to your students, they will see that equation. Okay. Now, you do not have to do student cards. That's an option that you have. Student cards will send out automatically once you land on a specific teacher card. Okay, I'm going to close my student cards, back to all my teacher cards. I'm going to add in another tool from the toolbox. I'm going to add in a Spotlight tool. Spotlight tool is really cool. What it does is it allows you to only show part of your screen at a time. You'll notice that it's kind of giving me a little preview of it with that little circle. Now, I can make this larger and show the entire screen, and again, still move this over. To get rid of that, you simply select the X here, and that will show up on the um, when I deliver the lesson. Now, when we were doing some review at the very beginning, I mentioned widgets. There are a ton of widgets in here. Widgets are essentially pre-made features that you can add into your lessons. So I could add in a spinner, and you'll notice that it's giving me the option for letters. There's blank spinners. I can do a spinner with um, numbers. There's a bunch of different options. Now, there's a ton in here, an absolute ton in here. So let's type in, let's do random number. Let's see what we can find. Okay, 
So it's going to give me the option for spinners. Let's do the spinner with 12 numbers. It, I can either insert this into a new card or insert it into the card that I'm currently on. You'll notice that over here on my carousel, it's going to show that there's a cool um, interactive feature that's on that card. That's what that grayed out uh, icon means. And then here is my spinner. In order to see how this works, I do need to go to preview. So here is my spinner. You'll notice on my screen, do you see how my mouse changes from the regular arrow to the finger pointing? You want it to be showing that finger in order for you to spin it. Depending on how large these are, sometimes we'll take, them, take it a second for it to stop. It just depends on which spinner you've chosen. So this would actually be a really cool resource if you wanted to have the students create maybe an equation using um, the numbers that this lands on. So let's see what my spinner lands on. Slowing down, stopping on. Wants to keep on going. All right. Looks like he might be stopping on. Is it 12? Is it 12? Oh, might be 11. Nope. Ooh, I think he stopped at 10. So I might be stopping at 10. Maybe I'm doing 10 plus, and then I could spin the spinner again and get another number. For the sake of time, though, I'm going to exit out of this. So I can choose a widget from my toolbox, or there's another way that you can find widgets. Let me add another card here. This icon in the top left-hand corner allows me to insert from my resources. So if I have anything inside of my resources that I think would be beneficial, I can add those in. I can even add in PDFs. I can add in PowerPoints. Um, there's a ton of stuff that you can add into your lessons themselves. Let's look for those widgets, though. Under the Classflow Resource Pack, which is a folder that everybody should have access to, there are folders with lesson building resources, badges, some clip art, there's sounds that you can add in. The lesson building resources are amazing, though. Within here, you're going to find different shapes, themed layouts, um, assessment icons, so if you wanted to put a question inside of your lesson, um, it gives you access to this. Widgets and layouts. There are my widgets. With my widgets, this is going to put these inside of folders, so it might be a little bit easier for you guys to find them. So I might go under spinners, and let's do, well, we already did a spinner. Let's do something other than a spinner. Let's do a random word generator. Hit insert. When I hit play inside of preview, it's going to give me a random adjective. That's an interesting one. Active. Busy. This is a great resource for language arts teachers. Okay. Let's go in. I'm going to add another card. I'm going to go back to that insert in the top left-hand corner. If you do happen to have MP4 files, you can add them into your lesson. I think I have one in here. Let me find it. Um, I made a really fun friends activity. You'll notice that I even have GIFs in here. You can add GIFs into your lesson. I'm not sure where. Oh, there it is. So here's my MP4. So if I select that, I can insert that MP4 file into my card. Now I can't preview it from here. Again, I do need to go to preview, but I can select play, and it will play. I don't think that you guys can hear it off of my um, screen but there is audio in the back of it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, let's add another card. Let's say that you wanted to add in a video though and you didn't have, um, you didn't have a video readily available. There's another way that you can get videos and even images. 
go back to that insert in the top left hand corner. And you'll notice that I'm looking inside of my resources over here. If I select that drop down, that's how I can get to that class flow resource pack. And then at the very bottom, it gives you the option to go into Bing images, YouTube videos, or even Bing web pages. So I could go into Bing images and search for a picture. Let's say that I needed to add in a picture of a triangle it's going to give me all sorts of different triangles. I can preview them with the little eye icon over here. It'll give me details as where it is that this came from, if it's protected or not, and then I can insert that into my lesson. You'll notice I can still continue to go in and add in more resources. In order for this to close, I'll just hit cancel to go back to my lesson. And adjust my image. Okay. All right. I'm going to take this another step further. This is probably going to be something that you guys will definitely want to watch and follow along on my screen instead of playing with this yourself. I'm going to talk about the cog on top of a shape or on top of something that maybe you have added into your lesson, whether that's a picture, um, could be text. When you select the cog, it gives you a few different options over here. I can reorder this, so bring this forwards or backwards. I can rotate and flip my image. I can anchor. Anchor is going to be really important. You don't want your students to necessarily be able to move stuff around if you send them a card. So if you anchor, you can anchor the movement of the object, you can anchor the sizing, and even anchor rotating. So before we get to that, let me just talk about how to rotate. That little green icon at the top is what's going to allow you to rotate it, and it's even going to tell you how many angles you've rotated it, which I think is pretty cool. So if you don't want students to be able to do that, you can simply select Anchor All. Now actions are probably um, one of my favorite features that we have here. If I select it, it's going to open up and let me change my action type. You'll notice that I can do show and hide. I can reorder automatically by selecting. I can do a drag and drop to container. So if you guys are familiar with Active Inspire, that was something that you would be able to do. You can even do clone on drag. Let's do that one. Clone on drag simply means that when I select this icon or this image and drag it, it's going to create a brand new one. Let's hit save. Now, I'm not going to be able to see what it looks like unless I hit preview. So now I'm on preview. I did clone on drag. So what happens? It gives me a brand new one. Every time that I select it, it'll give me a brand new one. So it's quick and easy. Um, all right, let me do another one. Let's do, oh, I can upload pictures. That's another really cool one. And actually, when I open this up, it's going to give me the option of, hi, everybody. Um, it's going to give me the option of actually taking a picture, and I can add that in if I want. Or I can do upload image. So if I have something inside of my computer that I want to add in, it's quick and easy. And again, I can resize this. Just as a reminder, press and hold shift if you want the proportions to stay the same. All right. I'm going to do another one. Let me add in a shape. Do a circle this time. And see, my colors and stuff, they're staying. I didn't have to redo those. Somebody asked for an example of show and hide. So, show and hide can get a little complicated, so I'm going to try to go through this slowly. I'm going to select one of my objects, select that cog, and go down to actions. And this time I'm going to do show and hide. Now, it gives me the option here of doing, when delivering this card, do I want this automatically hidden? 
I don't think I do. I think I'm going to keep that there. So basically, the item to show when I click this, I want this to show up when I click it. I'll hit done. And I can even do items to hide when I click it. So what I've done here is I've basically said when I select this red, dot, this red circle or the red dot, that this picture is either going to show up or it's going to hide. I'm going to hit save. Now again, I can't see this until I've actually hit preview. So once I hit preview, there's my show and hide. Now you can even go further to set it up so that if you select this image that the circle will show and hide. But that's a little bit more complicated. All right. We are rounding out our time here together. Um, let me see if I can answer any of these chat questions really quickly. If I don't get to it, we um, are talking about doing a frequently asked question. Let me go through into chat to see what we've got here. I know that you guys can't see it. Let's see, what kind of questions? Um, somebody asked if there's an option for doing desktop annotation with the online program. It, there's currently not. That's only available with the downloadable version of Classflow Desktop. Um, the question was, is there an option to buy licenses to use Classflow Desktop? Unfortunately, no, you do need to um, plug your computer into a Promethean board or panel at least every 90 days in order for you to continue to use Classflow Desktop. Uh, somebody asked if there was a way to add in other standards. The only way to add in other standards on top of Common Core would be if you had Classflow um, for schools which is a paid for resource. Your school would need to add that in. There is a recording of this that you guys will get. It will be sent out in about seven days and you will still be able to get a certificate. Oh, good question. How does collaboration, collaborate work if I want to build lessons collaboratively with a colleague? Okay, so I'm inside of my lesson. This icon right here with the uh, three people icon, if you select that, it's going to say start collaborating on this lesson. When I select that, I get a link. If you give this link to your colleagues that you want to collaborate with, you guys can all be inside of that um, lesson at the same time. You can also stop collaboration, and that way it would be closed. You would be the only one being able to edit it again. Good question. Um, oh, somebody asked where the uh, equation editor was. Let me go to a blank card here. Equation editor is located inside of the text tool. When I select text, it gives me the option for math formula, and it will open up, and that's where I can edit some equations and add in different functions. And again, widgets are located underneath this toolbox here. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining. Again, you will receive a um, recording of this. We will try to make sure that we get all of your questions answered. Thank you guys again.